All right, so this is a really quick update. I just wanted to share the fix for the edge border. So in the previous one, as we could see, we can change the distance from the edge that we call out before this actually turns into an island. Uh, but aside from it just being a sharp contrasting circle that cuts out, uh, but actually having that smooth difference. Now, it's able to update from this field by checking to see if a previous instance, a previous copy of that field has changed. But this one is an actual object, so how do we actually check that? It doesn't seem to have something directly built in to make that easy. To see if there was a difference or the state of the object. So, I needed to put something in here. And now, as you can see, this does actually work. It does the job I had intended for it. Okay, so let's check the code. What was actually needed? First thing to understand is that these are set up from a series of key frames. So by default, it always has at least two key frames. So the beginning and the end, um, but it also may have another series of them, like one in the middle or any various chunks or collections of those particular values. All right. So let's take a look at what type of values we might get out of this. To begin with, we had the previous distance from edge and the, or sorry, percent distance from edge, and then we also added previous in front of that and carried that privately. And we compare to see if they've changed, and if they have, we set them to equal each other again and call the build edge reduction map. That is what creates that uh, tapering effect on the island. So we don't need to update that every single time, so why waste the resources? Okay, additionally, we have the animation curve edge border. Now this is what I needed to check this time. So I produced a previous edge border. I set it to null when we first start up, when we're enabling, and then on the on validate function, just like the previous setup where we were checking for the distance from edge to see if that changed, we're doing the exact same thing for edge border, but we just do it like this. If not edge border dot equals previous edge border, then we're going to set it to equal a new animation curve and pass in edge borders keys. So all of those key frames that includes at this time, it will be at this value and it's tangents or it's uh, extensions, how, whatever you want to call it for where it uh, connects on to the next one. What type of angle is that running at? Um, so we end up getting all the same information. And when we do this equals, it, I believe it's doing a comparison against everything inside of there. And as usual, all of these things work at runtime as well. Okay, I hope this information was useful to you. If there's any mistakes that I did uh, with maybe some of my understandings of edge border, or uh, sorry, animation curves, please let me know. Um, this is how I've been using it. This is the first time I've used it for comparisons. Um, if you have some other interesting ways of using animation curves the, or other things you'd like to see in this terrain uh, editing pack, this suite of videos that I'm working towards, um, please let me know. I have some more things I'm planning, but I would love to hear what ideas you'd like to see um, and other things that are you found particularly valuable when editing these things on your own. All right. Talk to you later.